Hey everyone, this is Ross, and what you guys are looking at is my first main crop fig of the 2019 season. And I want to talk about how we kind of got to this point, because this is really the beginning of my fig season. The Brabas, as good as they are, they're not really what I would consider the beginning of my season. How do we know the difference between a Braba and the main crop? Well, here's a Braba right over here, and it's got a nice bag on it, but you can see it's developing below all of the leaves. Here's a leaf right here. You can see there's a leaf right here, but this is below every single leaf, which means this formed on last year's growth. All the new growth, which is where all the leaves are contained, that's where the main crop will form. You can see there's a leaf and right above the leaf is a fig. So that's really important to understand. Now, another concept I want you guys to understand is how we got figs now, because today's only July 15th. You know, how am I getting figs, main crop figs, by July 15th here in the Pennsylvania area? That's pretty unheard of. It's really impressive to be getting figs this early in my area. And here's the tree right here I want to show you guys. This is Fico Nita. This is the tree we just picked that fig from. And you can see the figs are quite progressed. If I could get this, this jungle out of the way, I guess we could just show you guys this right here. They're quite progressed. Um, and this means though, however, because we got one of them to ripen today, this means 90 days ago, the figs looked like this. And I know that's really difficult to see, but I want you guys to understand this, is that this is a new fig forming right here on the right, and this is a new branch forming on the left. So 90 days from this point, this will be ripe. So 90 days from today would be October 15th. At that point, it's pretty cold. We're looking at a potential frost. So that one may not even ever ripen here. But if we rewind actually 90 days ago, that puts us in April 15th. So in order to get figs by July 15th, you got to get them an earlier start here, at least in my climate. And that was very easily accomplished with our greenhouse. And you can see we had mountains of trees in here. We got them to a nice early start with the excess heat. They woke up sometime around March 15th. By April 15th and even April 1st, some of my earlier varieties will then put out fruit. Because there's so much heat in here, uh, it just triggers them into fruiting and they actually go berserk. So that's how we've gotten this whole situation to happen. Historically, I've actually been able to, in my climate, get figs to ripen, the main crop to ripen by July 1st. And that's with the earliest of the earliest varieties in the greenhouse. Now, if I have a really early variety, let's say like Azores Dark, Improved Celeste, Hardy Chicago, Ronde Bordeaux, they're not going to ripen uh, until August 1st if they're in a container and we didn't give them a head start. So we woke them up naturally. We just put them out here on the patio. A lot of those trees that you see along here haven't woken up until a month later after the greenhouse trees did. So a lot of my trees, even though this one's ripening July 15th, a lot of them in this section here, even though they're very early varieties, are probably not going to ripen by August 15th. So it's really important to see that dis distinction here is that that's a month earlier over there versus some of these who woke up underneath the sunroom, you know, didn't get that head start and they're about a month later. Um, however, we have varieties that didn't need a head start. So things like Suwadi, you know, Dien Manel, uh, Hate of De Argentil, Moscatel Preto, Rasti's Persian Unknown, Smith, you know, all these figs, Villette de Bordeaux, they don't really need a head start here. So for me, it wasn't, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to get them in the greenhouse and give them that head start when I should be dedicating a lot of that time to certain varieties that need it, like the Col de Doms and Black Madeira and this one here called Sanguinato. So, you know, you got to choose your battles here. But if I were to put, and this is what I'm going to focus on in future years, is putting a combination of early varieties in the greenhouse and, of course, all the late varieties in the greenhouse. You know, I want to eliminate as many late varieties as possible, really narrow that down. Because if I'm getting fruit by July 1st on things like my Azores Dark in the greenhouse, that's incredible. The weather right now is perfect. The weather right now is perfect in my climate for eating figs and we're just so far away. I mean, look at the figs on the trees. You know, they're still 
quite a bit away. And how that works, by the way, I want to mention, because I always get this question, people don't understand it exactly, is that the fig, it's, let's say it's in this stage here, it's very small. Well, this takes about 30 days to maybe get to this size. And then it takes another 30 days for it to get to this size. You know, they, they stagnate for 30 days. And you're only going to see them grow for a few days within those 30 day cycles. So again, it's really small, then to this size, then to a larger size. And then 30 days later after that, they're ripe. So we're probably on some of these figs actually, this is maybe only 60 days in. So I still have another 30 days or even 60 days potentially with this particular fig right here. It's almost impossible to know unless you know the variety of fig that you have. You can't really tell just by looking at them. You can't be like, oh, that's 60 days away. Oh, that's 30 days away. You know, you have to realize, all right, when did this form? When did this little small figlet here form? And then count fast forward from that point, and that's when you're gonna have a ripe fig. It's not necessarily visually that you can really tell. I mean, some people, I guess you could if you really study these things and you really observe them closely, but I would say most of these are probably another 30 to 45 days away. You know, this is probably the, the max size that they're gonna get. Uh, actually, believe it or not, they probably have another size to go. So I would say, based off of this, in about 15 days from now, they're gonna get to another larger size. They're gonna swell even further. And then they're gonna stagnate for another 30 days. And then they're gonna swell and they're gonna be ripe. So I'm looking at probably 40 to 45 days on this particular variety here. But again, that's, that's really tricky to be able to tell that unless you really know the variety um, or unless you've been counting, you know, that's not something I'm gonna be able to tell you, you're gonna be able to see for yourself. It's just something that you have to do. Um, now, I do wanna mention, I wanna to touch on a few more points is that if I have, you know, some figs in the greenhouse that are super early, they're ripening for me. Again, I wanna come back to that point. If they're ripening for me, July 1st in the greenhouse, then what's the point of Brava at this point? You know, it doesn't really make sense. The Brava are really only giving me a couple figs here and there. And what they end up doing is they actually delay the main crop by about two or three weeks. So yeah, I can get some Brava and I've had some Brava this year sometime around June 15th, even I think as early as June 1st, we had some Brava. So we're getting our Bravas about two weeks, I would say, earlier than we would our main crop in the greenhouse. So we're getting an ex a season extension there by having some Brava by about two weeks. Because if we're getting them ripened here in the greenhouse by July 1st, we're getting our Brava sometime around June 15th. I would say on average, those are the two dates. So we're really, really buying ourselves two weeks, but on the trees that we get the Brava, we're then delaying the main crop by two weeks or maybe even three weeks. So it's really a difficult sell to be like, okay, well, we have this one Brava here, this one fig, which is then gonna delay the production and actually lessen and lower the production of let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or so figs that it would, it would slow that process down, but also probably lower the production of these. These figs right here could potentially be close to this size based off of just this one fig, as crazy as that sounds. So for me, I'm not really focusing on Brabus here. I think that's uh, abundantly clear, I think, at this point. You know, and not only that, but we just don't have the temperatures. You know, um, I think it's not, I think it's just not really worth it in terms of production of when these figs ripen. I'd rather have a much more abundant main crop. As you can see, you know, these trees can be loaded up and down the branches. I'd rather have that than a few Brabas just two weeks earlier in the season. I think that's really gonna drive the point home. But again, it depends on where you guys live. Maybe you guys live in a climate that it doesn't really get that warm and you have to rely on Brava production. So that was kind of the video here, guys. I wanna cut this one open this main crop here. I want to see what the inside looks like real quickly. And then I'm going to let you guys go. We could talk about this fig for just a, a, a smidgen here. 
a smidgen. I don't know. You guys say that in England? But uh, yeah, this is Fico Nita once again. I don't want to spend too much time on the tasting because I don't think this is really going to taste that great. It is the most optimal time of the season to be ripening them, as I mentioned, but uh, you know, it is the first main crop. Um, usually the first figs off of the tree don't really ripen all that well, but this one looks not bad. But I did pick it a bit early because we're getting some rain coming in, and this is what the interior looks like here. Really not that bad. This is probably gonna be a refreshing fig. You know, this is something that's not gonna blow me away in terms of flavor. Uh, you can tell by the interior, but nonetheless, a very pretty fig. It looks like it's got lots of honey in there, which I always like to see. It's going to be nice and sweet. Let's try it. That's good. It's nice and figgy. And that's kind of it. So I want to thank you guys for watching this one. You know, this was probably for me just a quick rating. Maybe a two or a three out of five. It's probably a two out of five right here. Two out of five. So, uh, yeah. I'm so, I'm so, I really am amazed though and happy to have these figs this early because that's really the name of the game here for me and my climate. It's just that this variety and how early I had to pick it, it's just a bit disappointing in that sense. But, all right guys, if you want earlier figs, you know, those are the steps you gotta take. We'll catch you soon, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe, like the video, and share this with somebody you know who enjoys growing figs or perhaps is interested in growing figs. And also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that is down in the description, as well as Patreon. If you guys are interested in our videos, really have been enjoying this and learning from this, I think I save you guys quite a bit of money. So Patreon is kind of, in a way, paying for itself just by watching my videos. But uh, Again, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Take care.